theme park capital of the world and one of the planet's most desirable places for a holiday home. Today, living in's going stateside. Thirty or forty years ago, this patch in central Florida was home to a few swamp dwellers and some cattle. Nowadays, it's one of the fastest growing areas in the US and one of the hottest spots for property in the world. I'm talking, of course, about Orlando, and today I'm going to find out why so many of us are buying here and what sort of property is available. It may be inland, but the beaches are still one of the main reasons why people come to Orlando, and both the Gulf and Atlantic coasts are a little over an hour away. But probably Orlando's biggest and most famous attractions are the theme parks, without which most of the state would probably still be a chain of swamps and lakes. One of the main factors in Orlando's growth is the amount of spare land to build on, something reflected in the amount of golf courses, over 1,400, and the amount of building work going on. Overall, the city is very much a two-pronged affair between locals and tourists. Towards the north tends to be stuff like the downtown business district and residential areas like Windermere. Further south, you'll find more hotels and holiday homes in places such as Davenport and Kissimmee, all within easy reach of the major theme parks. As you might expect, tourism is the big breadwinner in this state, bringing in around $50 billion each year. If you are thinking of buying here because of the theme parks or despite them, it's something you can't really afford to ignore. The popularity of Orlando really does boil down to one man, or should that be Mouse? And prior to 1970, nobody would have given a second thought to taking a holiday in Florida. Disney's success paved the way for tourism. Hotels and attractions sprung up on International Drive. And other parks such as Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure emerged to cement Orlando's crown as the world's capital of fun. And not content with an annual trip, many are now buying houses like there's no tomorrow, hoping life will become one big long holiday. Over the last couple of years, property prices here in Florida have hit an all-time high. And if you're thinking of making that life-changing decision and moving here, it's common sense to do your research. One vital part of that research is meeting Brits who are already here. Ned Kelly moved to Orlando a couple of years ago, having been a regular visitor since 1994. So, Ned, you've been here for about two and a half years now. I mean, what, what's everyday life like in Florida? Well, it's really fantastic. Um, you know, I play golf uh, about three times a week. I mean, within 15 minutes of anywhere in Orlando, you can find a golf course. Yeah. And, you, and there's so many different types. You've got Nick Fowler golf course, you've got Jack Nicholas, you know, you've got Tiger Woods courses. Tiger Woods just lives around the corner from me, in actual fact. You know, and so does Mar Marco Mira. So, all the big golfers are in the Orlando area as well. And then, if you don't, if you get fed up playing your golf, then I've got the boat. I've got two jet skis, Wonder Lakes. I mean, there's something like 258 miles of shoreline on the Butler chain of lakes. I mean, you've, re you've really got everything. And you know, and the ladies over there, I mean, they come over here and they love the malls. The shopping is fantastic. And I get all my football live. You know, every Saturday morning. You know, I'll, I'll still see the Reds and uh, yeah, it's fantastic. So you just kind of chill out and relax all the time? Yeah, most of the time, yeah. Well, I sort of, sort of semi-retired. Um, you know, I haven't, you know I'm, I'm really in a comfortable zone where, you know, if I want to do it, I can. But if, but if I don't have to, you know, I don't have to. And at this moment in time, I, I don't want to do it either. So I'm just relaxing and, and enjoying and trying to improve my golf. So, I mean, why did you actually pick Florida as a place to live? I actually bought my first property over here in 96. Right. Uh, and my long-term goal was actually to come over here and get a green card. And I bought a business in 99, which was a housing management, which was looking after all the villas for the, for the Brits on US 27 and 192. Mm -hmm. And through that, I got my green card. And this year, actually, I, if, if, I, if I decide, I can actually become a US citizen this year. If you were to give someone advice that's actually thinking of making the move, what would, what would you say to them? I would say, get on a plane and get over here. And, you know, and just you know, relax, come over and just enjoy it, because it's a fantastic place. I mean, and, you know, if you, you know, you go down a bit south here, about 10 miles away from here, I mean, you know, it's like being back in England. Really? I mean, well, there's just so many of us over here. There's so many Brits here, it's unbelievable. Any regrets at all? Uh, no, I mean, um, no, not about coming over here, no. I mean, there's certain things in life, you know, if I look back on my life, I've got regrets about, but one of them is not coming to Orlando in Florida. To get to Orlando, you're talking in the region of a 10-hour flight. But the good news is that being such a hot tourist route, and with so many international airports, you can quite often find good deals, so home is never too far away. Once you're here, getting around is pretty good, but car culture definitely rules. Traffic around holiday hotspots is infamously heavy, and jams aren't uncommon. But with cheap gas, good parking, and good value rental, you can't really beat it.
those who don't give a Donald Duck for Disney, there are parts of Orlando which are tourist free. Downtown is just like a regular city, complete with offices, amenities and vibrant people. In terms of lifestyle, there is definitely a good community feeling and it does seem fairly easy to become a part of it. One thing you might find surprising, I know what I did, is the number of churches around. Here the church does play a major role. Whilst downtown is mainly business oriented, you will find yourself never more than a short drive from any kind of amenity you want, not least the most sacred of American institutions, the shopping mall. One of the newest is the Mall at Millennia, complete with all the shops, brand names and facilities you could ever need and more. But if you're talking lifestyle, the American Mall does have a good feeling to it that you just don't seem to find in UK shopping centres. Kids hang around without causing trouble, they're open late, you've got seating areas, restaurants, bars, movie theatres, basically everything you could ever need under one air-conditioned roof. The focal point in downtown Orlando is Church Street. It's very quiet during the day with only a few shops open. It doesn't really get its steam up until late in the evening. Downtown Orlando is definitely a more authentically American nighttime experience. And at the weekends, this place can get pretty mad. This is where locals tend to hang out, have a beer, chat with friends and catch some live music. For a mix of locals and visitors, Disney and Universal both have their own nighttime areas and come complete with bars, clubs and restaurants. For the big tourist experience, you need to take a putt at International Drive. Here you'll find everything from crazy golf courses to restaurants and English pubs. One man who knows all about the latter is Errol Cameron. So how long have you actually been living in Florida? 24 years. My mother moved over here five years before I came over and she wanted to bring the whole family over. She wanted a better life for uh, the family. A lot of people coming out from England would actually probably go back. Why have you stayed for 25 years? It actually took me five years, six years to make my first trip back to England. I mean, I do enjoy going back because I miss the pubs, going out with friends. And then to go out and have a decent night out, uh, out here is very difficult because you've got to drive everywhere. Whereas back home, you can just uh, walk to three, four, five, six pubs on the road and you're, you're fine. You can have a good session, but it's very difficult out here when you've got family and friends here. So, I mean, it's, it's 25 years, an awful long time to be here. You've obviously seen a huge amount of change. Oh, there's a lot of changes. International Drive has expanded uh, tremendously over the years. Uh, Kissimmee especially, because when I moved to Orlando, Kissimmee was like just two lanes of road, and it's now six lanes. Huge influx of uh, British people coming over, uh, buying houses uh, in Orlando, Kissimmee, US 27 out that way as well. Because we do a lot of football games here, you'll meet people coming in and you'll find that uh, there are different people that have moved in and they've probably only been here, what, two, three years, something like that. How big is the British community? I couldn't tell you as far as numbers, but it is very big. I mean, after living here for so long, do you have any tips for, for anybody that's thinking of moving over here? Well, the thing I, t I, I say to a lot of people when they think about it, I say don't put it down to weather. Because a lot of people think, oh yeah, the weather's great, they want to move out here. And I've met a few people that have moved out here, been here six months or a year, and it's not what they expect. It's totally different. And they've, they've moved back. Well, because they were out on holiday and they were uh, experiencing the good weather, really hot and that, they thought, oh yeah, this is the climate for them. But it, it, it doesn't suit everybody. The cricketers may be one place to catch up with Brits abroad, but there are also magazines directed entirely at Britons in Florida, which is another great way to keep up with events back home. Well, you know, after all, they do call Orlando the theme capital of the world. Hmm, what to do? Hmm. Oh, jeez! See you after the break. In part two, we get the lowdown on the Orlando property market from the experts and see some of the houses on offer.
One thing I've noticed about being here in Orlando is the amount of construction that's going on. And if you're thinking of buying a place here, it's really hard to know where to start. The best place is probably with expats who've been there and done that, and the experts. Now, it may not seem the most obvious place to find a Florida property, but you could do worse than your own high street. Kevin Parson runs his own business from Suffolk. People, uh, first of all, contact us either by the telephone, personal visits, or through our internet site, uh, and then obviously register their interest, give us their objectives and their budget, but more important also whether it's purely for investment or whether it's for um, investment stroke holiday home. Uh, the next stage then is for them to decide whether they want to actually travel to Florida and to see whether they'd like to view the property. And then after that, um, if they come out to Florida, um, our partner agent in the States, they actually show them around the whole um, area, give them updates as to what's available at the present time, show them the communities, and from there they can decide on whether which property they actually would like to buy. Once they've decided which property they'd like to buy, um, they pay a, a reservation deposit that varies between $1,000 and $10,000. Um, that's fully refundable at any time up until contracts have been exchanged. Uh, the balance is then payable on completion, which can vary anywhere between six and 12 months. Many people are scared off by the paperwork involved, but in fact, in the U US, um, it's very different to the UK. It's a lot simpler, uh, the contract's a lot simpler, and the paperwork's a lot simpler. Um, you're helped every st step of the way by specialist people um, dealing in mortgages, and also in the furnishings and bank accounts. You can opt for a more direct route and take a trip to the States to get your own agent. The rules for buying property do differ from the UK, as every agent has access to all houses through a central multiple listing system. On the whole, buying a house is a lot simpler, and you can do it with minimal bureaucracy. But it is worth enlisting the help of a specialist, especially if you're buying for the first time. Judy Black has been in the real estate business since 1977 and in Orlando since 1979. Realtors here are known for providing a lot of service. You know, from the moment customers walk in the door, um, they hold their hand through the entire process. If they're coming here from the UK, they may, they may not know much about the area. So, um, and it may, it's very different. Our terminology and things are different, but we, we sit them down, we counsel with them, we try to find out what their needs and wants are and then we'll take them out and look at some homes. Once they find something that they like, you know, we handle all of the paperwork. Um, we handle everything from contract negotiations to home inspections, um, make sure that they're, they're familiar with what they're gonna pay, how they're gonna transfer the money, how they're gonna close on the property. It's like one-stop shop, we take care of it all. I think that um, people really enjoy the Orlando market because we have a little bit of everything to offer. Um, if you're here looking for a vacation home, we have lots of new construction near the attractions, things that you can buy and there's management groups that will be set up to help manage it for you. We have decorators that will furnish it for you. I can't go a whole program without at least mentioning the decor in Florida's show homes. Opulent to the degree that you would think you're in a posh hotel, it can be quite overbearing. So if that's not your taste, think twice about buying a ready furnished place. From gated communities to resort-style developments and residential homes, there really is an awful lot of property available. Unlike anywhere else, location is hugely important. And finding that next big up-and-coming area could make you an awful lot of money. Over the last few years, the fashion in new homes is to turn the clock back a few decades and go for the 50s-style all-American dream. The forerunner to this is Disney's Celebration, designed to be the perfect town. Snow even comes out of the lampposts at Christmas. It is very successful, if a little toy town. There are more regular areas available, Windermere being amongst the most desirable of these. As well as the usual residential housing, you'll find another of the increasingly popular trends, gated communities. They do pretty much what they say on the tin, no entry without permission, and quite often have their own facilities, like golf courses. Another new trend is the condo-style towns, with condominiums and houses having access to a resort-style complex, rather like a holiday village. 
As you might expect, these are particularly popular as vacation rentals and second homes. Be aware that pretty much all places with facilities come with a monthly or annual maintenance fee. Many such homes are springing up around the theme park areas, such as Davenport. I went to Davenport to meet Alan Jackson, a veteran of the Orlando property market, to find out a little more. Development in Orlando right now is massive. It's unbelievable. I live here, I'm a real estate broker, and I can't keep up with it. The best way to pro buy property in Central Florida right now, if you're gonna buy new, you only have one choice, and that's off plan. Some of the builders are nine months, year, two years. I even heard some that are three and four years out being able to deliver a house. The only downside to buying off plan is you have to wait for it, to tell you the truth. And sometimes the house, of course, if you're not good at visualizing, isn't going to be exactly what you thought it was going to be. And then, of course, you've got construction going on as the house is being built or finished. You've got the construction of the other houses going on around you. But the upsides are much stronger. Okay? I mean, you put down a very minimal deposit, and that house keeps going up in value. I mean, you're making sometimes three, four hundred percent on your money by the time the house is finished. Most of the short-term rental product that's going on in Central Florida is going on in Davenport right now. Um, wherever there's a spare piece of land, okay, there's either something scheduled to go on it or something is going on it. It's close to Disney, like right now, we're seven minutes from the main gate. So hence you see a short-term rental community okay, that's going to be used as vacation rentals because it's very uh, easily accessible to the Disney corridor. I normally like to tell people if they're really buying it for the vacations and the investment, to hold on to it for about 10 years. Because at 10 years, everything starts to need to be replaced. The roof needs to be replaced, the carpet needs to re be replaced, the refrigerator, the stove, the air conditioner. Everything starts breaking down around that time frame, and there's plenty of buyers that will buy a 10-year-old house. I don't think that the present escalation in property values in Central Florida or Florida will continue forever, it can't. It probably is going to continue for a couple, three more years though because the mass exodus into the state of Florida right now is overwhelming. So it, the demand for real estate is just incredible. There are waiting lists for, for new housing that 500 people on the list. I've heard 4,000 people on the list for certain uh, properties. So I don't think it's gonna stop, but actually I wish it would. Contrary to Alan's wishes though, there seems to be no let up in the building. And with 1,000 people coming to Florida every day and over half of them to the Orlando area, you can see why. Space and market opportunities are obviously finite, but when and if the bubble will burst remains to be seen. With living space for some 10,000 residents, one major project happening in Orlando is Baldwin Park. I met up with Jan Nicely to take a look. Jan, what exactly is this? This is Baldwin Park, which is an 1,100-acre traditional neighborhood development. What's that? It's sort of something new in the Orlando area. Uh, what we think of it is, as um, when we were growing up, we had smaller neighborhoods, smaller lots. People knew each other. They walked around. We have a village center. So the idea is for people to go back to the olden days when, of course, we always think the grass is greener. It was always better then. It's an all-inclusive complex, but what sort of amenities do you have within the complex? Well, inside Baldwin Park, we have a downtown village center that will have several restaurants, fine dining and casual dining. We'll have shops, two banks, grocery store, and we have two community centers at this point in time. We'll have a third one, and one of them is over here. They're spread out to help feed all the people. In this one, there's a park area, and we have a junior Olympic-sized heated pool a party room, we have an exercise facility, state-of-the-art equipment. Is this actually a trend that's happening throughout the United States? It certainly is. The first one started at Celebration Florida, which is part of the Disney, and they're all over. There are several others in Orlando, not quite as big as this and not quite as varied, but they're all over the country. What's the difference between this and, say, a gated community? A gated community generally is small, and it'll have a small amenity, maybe a pool, maybe tennis courts. This has no gates. It was built to 
blend in with the city around it, so that, again, the traditional part of it. In a gated community, you could never have a village center. Um, you'd never have anybody selling cookies at your front door either. Are the houses actually all the same? No, they're not. We have several different types of homes. We have condominiums that are about our lowest end in price at about around 300, up to 350,000. And then we'll go into uh, town homes. We'll have village home, cottage home, bungalow home. And they're, they're just describing the size and the nature of this home. Well, it sounds like the kind of place that you'd never want to leave. Absolutely. Are you going to show me around? Yes, come on, let's go. Excellent. We went to one of the townhouses to see inside. It's a three bedroom. So tell me what we have here in the house. We're in the kitchen family room area that's a very open, livable space. It's really nice, isn't it? It's very lovely, very livable, open center island. In the back we have a courtyard, private, fenced, and a double car garage. Upstairs are three bedrooms and two baths, and downstairs we have a half bath and a very large open formal living area. As the price range goes up, I mean, what, what extras do you get? What's the difference? Well, you'll get a larger lot, and the location of the lot will have a lot more impact. You'll be on a water, a lake, um, and also maybe on a park. We have a lot of parks. In the finishes in the home, you'll see stone floors, you'll see faux painted walls, higher ceilings, and crown moldings or cornices being much larger and heavier. Why would I want to move here? First of all would be location. You are within 10 to 20 minutes of anything you possibly need. Second, the amenities here, the shopping, the exercise, the pools, everything you need there. And third, the people are fabulous. You'd find something in common with many people here. Overall, the development was really impressive. What makes it stand out are the little touches, like a community website to keep you in touch with everything from local events to numbers for babysitters. With building times for new properties being a year or two, there is more call than ever for resale homes. I met up with Lynn Grogan, a British estate agent turned realtor, who made the move herself to show me round one. Now Lynn, this is uh, quite impressive. It's quite big when you walk in, isn't Beautiful, it? Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it's really unusual. Beautiful entrance, solid doors, solid wood doors, fabulous chandelier. And as you can see, the entertaining in this house is obviously just as you come through the doors with the vaulted ceilings gives you that grandeur. Uh, so this is where you'd, hold, you'd start your parties in here, fabulous. isn't it? Yeah, yes, you, could, you yeah. would. You would be entertaining. Um, you would uh, entertain with the piano. Then you could go out onto the pool deck. All the family room, the kitchen area, the laundry room is all to the left of the house. This is a four bedroomed house, so the bedrooms, the four bedrooms are off to the right. And I think what's really special about it is out here, you've That's got this correct. fantastic view yes. of the lake. I mean, to wake up to this every morning. Yes, absolutely fabulous. You have a beautiful pool, beautiful decking, yeah. tiled marble tiles. You have a beautiful sitting area over there to the right. Very and nice. over here on the left, you have the wet, uh, beautiful bar where ah. you can sit and have something to eat. And a barbie. And the barbecue. The That's correct. And of course, you've got this amazing frontage that you don't normally have. Absolutely, and that's what will sell this house, is the 200 feet of lake frontage. So, what are we talking to buy a place like this? We're talking $2.2 million. $2.2 million? $2.2 million, and we won't have any problems selling this house. And here's a guide to average prices in Orlando, and some local information to help you settle or invest in the area.